There's been a lot of criticism of Jeff Fisher as he closes in on the all-time losses record for an NFL coach. He should have started Jared Goff earlier. He banned Rams legend Eric Dickerson from the sideline. His team is miserable to watch despite electric first round draft picks like Todd Gurley and Tavon Austin. He's never even had a 500 season with the Rams despite an embarrassment of additional draft picks from the RG3 trade. All of this is true. And yet, it's not really fair to say Jeff Fisher is a bad coach. Now let me be clear, I loathe Jeff Fisher's unique brand of unwatchable football and the way he survives in the NFL, but if I delivered a hot take about how he's a terrible coach, it wouldn't be honest, because he's not terrible. He's mediocre, relentlessly and historically mediocre. In more than two decades as a head coach in the NFL, he has made six playoff appearances, won three division titles, and reached a Super Bowl one time. His last playoff appearance was eight years ago, and his last playoff win happened in the first year of the Iraq War. In the 20 years that Fisher has coached a full 16-game season, fully half of them have ended with seven or eight wins. Half! The man delivers more sevens and eights than a craps table. And while most organizations want to see things like playoff wins, or year-to-year -year improvement, or please God, any kind of success, Fisher has spent his entire career with two organizations who appreciated his nice, stable mediocrity. He started off as the interim coach of a terrible Oilers team and presided over a 7-9 season and three consecutive 8-8 eight eight seasons while the Oilers moved to Tennessee and played a season in Memphis before settling in Nashville with a new name. That set the table for his only period of sustained success, with the Titans reaching the playoffs four times in five years. That's what Steve McNair, Eddie George, and the longest leash in pro football can do for you. With that in mind, Stan Kroenke's bidding war with the Dolphins to hire Fisher makes sense. He was perfect for a team that wanted to leave St. Louis. Because not only does Fisher have experience in coaching a team through a move, but he also creates unwatchable football that can sap a city's desire to even have the team. Now, speaking broadly, Fisher's teams are marked by solid special teams play, a hard-nosed but often undisciplined defense, and an offense in which no skill player ever exceeds expectations. Tavon Austin was the eighth overall pick in the draft and he just got a $42 million extension despite never reaching 500 receiving yards in a season. Todd Gurley is a brilliant talent averaging 3.2 yards per carry. Vince Young twice saved Fisher's job by emerging from the bench to lead the team on a hot streak but never came close to reaching his full potential. Hmm, wonder why. And yet, despite being on cruise control toward a fifth straight losing season, Rams officials are saying that it's unfair to judge him by his record. Chief Operating Officer Kevin Demoff has hinted that Fisher's job is safe because he's done a model job of providing leadership and consistency during the move to California. Consistency. Frankly, as a fan, I want the variation of a winning season here or there, but I guess Demoff knows what he wants. And Apparently what he wants is a nice, pleasant round of negotiations with Fisher's agent, who just so happens to be Demos' father. Now in case that isn't clear, pretend Jerry Maguire is your agent. Now pretend the guy negotiating with Jerry Maguire is this kid. No, when... let's go to the zoo. Yeah, that is Jeff Fisher's work situation. He might just be smarter than we're giving him credit for. And that's what I appreciate about Fisher. In the NFL, there are only 32 head coaches, and the positions are filled by hyper-competitive, workaholic madmen who are part field general, part CEO in a cutthroat, multi-billion dollar industry. And here's Jeff Fisher, not knowing who the Patriots running backs are four days before his team plays them. For more than two decades, he's been a moderately sh but inoffensive presence that we just kind of accept, like Dockers or Oatmeal. That's why it's incredible to see his name next to legends of bygone eras. Fisher is an obvious outlier next to the game's greats. Of the 10 coaches with the most career losses, Fisher easily has the worst winning percentage, and only Chuck Knox was less accomplished in the playoffs. Fisher is 11th in all-time coaching wins, and of those in the top 30, only one coach has a worse winning percentage. And yet, Fisher has more wins than Bill Parcells. That's what completely insane job security will do for you. And that is why when Jeff Fisher finally breaks the record for most losses by an NFL coach, it will be not only his greatest career achievement, but also the truest representation of his abilities. Because he didn't get there by being bad. He did it by being not quite bad enough to fire.